If you want to see someone who doesn't know what they're doing not fix a motherboard, that's what this crap is. We're back on this thing again. This board is an Asus Maximus 7 Ranger. I gave up on this thing three months ago, but then Adam Ant IT did a repair video on the exact same motherboard, which would fan spin start, but then get hung on the same Q codes. And it turned out the bias was corrupted. And because mine starts but gets stuck on double zero, I was thinking maybe it might be the BIOS. I bought some chip programmers and was waiting for them to arrive. And then when I find out this motherboard has BIOS flashback, basically you could flash the BIOS without even getting into the BIOS screen. Just digging around on the board view, I noticed there's an EEPROM next to the BIOS chip, which is next to the BIOS flashback LED. Maybe that's where the flashback BIOS, BIOS is, lol. For the flashback, all you do is download your BIOS file, extract the cap file, Rename it to the shortened BIOS file name. If you go to your manual under the BIOS update utility, it's this here. Locate the BIOS flashback button and its linked USB slot. Load the BIOS file on the thumb drive appropriate to the era. Mine has to be 1 or 2 gig in fat format. Stick it in the flashback slot and just hold the button down. The button blinks. There should also be a green LED near the BIOS chip. The flash drive should start blinking a lot. There's a big pause. A lot more blinking of the USB drive. Then the BIOS button LED goes out, and we get absolutely nothing. This is kind of when I realise it's probably not the BIOS, and that's because I think the CPU error light is telling you it's hardware. Even though the BIOS route looks hopeless, Adamant IT said the BIOS flashback is a bit hit and miss, and since we have programmers, we don't really have much to lose. Plus, it's another skill to learn. The first problem, there's an insane number of BIOS chip programmers. In fact, I got sick of looking after I found over 25 just on AliExpress alone. And they can range in price from $5 to a crazy $1,700. And then on top of that, there's copies and different versions of the same thing. This one is the worst culprit. There's EZP 2010, 2013, 2019 plus, 2020, 2023 plus, XP 866 plus, no name, Mini Pro 100E, ZP 816, G100, EZP X Pro, Sky Pro, and who knows what else. I don't know if they're all the same thing or different versions, but I do notice there's two price tiers, like round $15 and over 30 But I wouldn't have a clue if the expensive ones are any better. From what I can gather, there's four main types. The CH341A, the EZP 2019+, and its variants, the more serious RT809F, and the TL8862 Plus. The others I won't mention because they're out of hobby price range. I bought the cheaper two because it was under $20 for both of them. Next confusing thing is the software because there's a lot of different ones. This might be a good thing for me because the hardware listings didn't say it supported my BIOS chip. And because the software has chip detect, it probably has the information in them, i.e. maybe a different software has my chip in it. I'm going to start with the cheapest because if the cheapest does the job, why bother with anything else? And that's the CH341A. And unfortunately there's a problem with these things. This thing outputs 5 volts on the data lines when the chip is only a 3.3 volt data line chip. And you mod it with a wire here and a wire here. Voltlog did the original CH314A programmer mod, but Adamant IT did a rehash and did another video. Even though you could probably get away with the 5 volts, I'm not taking the risk so I've modded mine to 3.3 volts. Update. As of a few days ago, Adamant IT just posted a new programmer. This CH341A version 1.6 has a voltage selector and with this four position switch you can select four different voltages for the data lines. To install the chip you go by this little graphic down here. 25 series chips goes on this end and 24 series goes on this end. And that pin 1 of the chip is always on the lever side, i.e. on this side. With our 25 series chips fitted on the left side and pin 1 is on the lever side. Next we have to load the driver and I just copied Saravana AL's video. From memory there was some mucking around and I think I ran the driver install program first and then plugged it in. Either way this is what it looks like when it was plugged in. Just digging around and there seems to be three programs. There's a CH341A programmer but there seems to be two versions a 1.44 and a 2.2. AS programmer this seems to be version 2.0.3A and a NEO programmer which seems to have the same version as the CH341A above. In Adamant IT's original CH341A programmer, he was using the AS programmer. But his new video with the multi-volt version 1.6, he switched to Neo programmer. So that's what I'll try first. We have our 25 series chip on the 25 series end with pin 1 on the lever side and we plug it in. Under interface in device manager, we see our programmer. We start the program and we hit detect. 
and we're getting GD25 queued 64. I think this is a problem because mine's GD25B64. We close that and let's do a search. We type in GD25B, then 64, and there's no matching chip. And I think this is going to be a problem. AS Programmer has a C version, but I don't know if that one's right. The standard CH341A program doesn't seem to have a B either. And this dodgy looking Russian one doesn't have a B either. Adamant IT used the expensive RT809F programmer, and this one had the correct GD25B64B. So I switched to the EZP2019+, Plus, but I couldn't get the drivers to load. Evidently there's some convoluted method where you have to turn off the digital signatures in your OS. But that didn't really matter, because when I opened the program, it didn't have any GD25Bs anyway. It looks like I'm out of luck with these programmers. I guess the trick was to download the softwares first and try them. Then when you can find the one that can do it, buy that programmer. Like this is the RT809F software, and it has my chip in there. This XG Pro, which is one software for the TTL8862+, Plus, also has my chip. I don't think I'm going to pursue this programming anymore, because I think it's hardware. Plus the programmer that can do the job is rather expensive for a one-off. And because of a post I found in the comments in Adam Ant IT's video, it goes along the lines of, if you program through a chip programmer, you lose serial numbers, MAC addresses and who knows what else. So you have to put those numbers back in your BIOS file before you flush it back. Update. Adamant IT covers it in this new video. Basically you need a cleaned out BIOS file. And it starts here with problems using an untrusted BIOS. There's also supposed to be a video coming where he cleans out the BIOS file. This looks like another fail, but I think it was a red herring anyway. And that's due to the CPU fail LED being lit. It kind of reminds me of the VGA fault LED on that ASUS board. Because the onboard graphics and one RAM channel seem to be disconnected from the rest. If you look at the schematic, the CPU is directly connected to the video and the RAM. So maybe a few cracked balls will cut both of them. I guess it's back to looking at the hardware.